What is a set? A set is a collection of objects called elements. It is possible to have an infinite set. We may, perhaps, have a set of integers. There are an infinite number of integers, so we have a set of infinite elements. A set can be specified by listing the properties of the elements. Set theory was the brainchild of one logician, George Cantor. In particular, his original set theory, known today as the naive set theory, was further developed upon by Gottlieb Frege, a German mathematician slash logician, as the basis of mathematics, where everything about mathematics was logically derived from set theory. In 1902, Frege was in the process of publishing the second of three volumes of his book, The Basic Laws of Arithmetic, when he received a letter from an Englishman, Bertrand Russell. Russell had a series of correspondence with Frege, and here is a simplified version of what I imagine their conversation to be like. Can I form the set of all sets? Yes. All the elements inside, let's say, Y are also sets. Therefore, Y is the set of all sets. Would you then say that Y is an element of itself? Uh, yes. The set of all sets is a set, so it is an element of itself. So you are actually telling me that some sets are elements of itself and others are not? Yes. Y is an element of itself. But a set of, let's say, horses isn't a horse, so that would not be an element of itself. Can I then form the set of all sets which are not elements of themselves? Um, okay. Let's define omega as the set of all sets which are not elements of itself. Then, is omega an element of itself? Now let's think about this. If omega is an element of itself, by definition of omega, it would not be an element of itself? If yes, then no. If omega is not an element of itself, then it would satisfy the property of not being an element of itself, then it must be an element of omega itself. If no, then yes. This paradox became famously known as Russell's paradox. Set theory permitted logical fallacies such as this one, thus naive set theory must be logically flawed. Frege had almost finished his book on the foundation of mathematics based on set theory, and after writing to Russell he added this to the end of his book. A scientist can hardly meet with anything more undesirable than to have the foundation give way just as the work is finished. In this position, I was put by a letter from Mr. Bertrand Russell as the work was nearly through the press. Frege never published a planned third volume of The Basic Laws of Arithmetic. Russell had destroyed the mathematical axioms of the time. Russell later made an attempt to explain mathematics on a logical basis once more with his book Principia Mathematica, co-written with Whitehead, where he attempts to prove 1 plus 1 equals 2 in a couple hundred pages, in a further effort to once again unite mathematics and logic. The set theory today is the zermelo frankel set theory, which avoids the paradoxes of the naive set theory. Basically, omega does not exist in this model. In 1940, Godel proved this model will never be proven false. In 1963, Paul Cohen proved this model is independent of other axioms of set theory and therefore cannot be proven true either. So I guess we're kind of stuck. What happened to Frege, you may ask? He later came to the conclusion mathematics could not be founded upon logic, but is instead based upon geometry. He died before he could publish any more works on this new postulation. However, his previous works on set theory is not without merit, since it has proven influential on the development of modern philosophical mathematical logic.